What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to part number one of the budget turbo Miata build. In today's video, we're going to be installing our standalone ECU and trying to get it to start and driving it around and uh, seeing if we can get it to run. If I can hit enough buttons on the keyboard, make it do what I want. So let's uh, get into it. I want to say, first off, this is not a how to. If you want to see a how to on how to, if you want to see a how to, how to install this standalone ECU, uh, go watch Cashed Out Cars on YouTube and he shows you how to set up, install, and do a lot of stuff on your speedy EFI unit. I will be watching his videos to get my car set up. I have been studying them. So go watch his video if you want a how-to. This is just me bringing you guys along, part one, where we install it and see what can happen. So I already got the base tune loaded up. I uh, should have the firmware right, software right. Everything should be all happy, and we should have a 1.8 liter base tune in this. So first off, we're going to pull the seat out, get to where the stock ECU is, unplug it plug the new one in plug the computer in see if we can get it to start so i'm gonna throw you guys on the gopro um i want to do a better quality intro on this video i'm gonna throw you guys on the gopro for ease of uh placement i guess and recording while i do this so let's dive right into it We're going to be installing the Speedy EFI standalone ECU plug and play unit today. All right, so we got the top down and now we're going to be pulling the seat out. The seat is five 14 millimeter bolts. There's one on each corner and then one holding the uh, seat belt uh, retainer to the actual body of the car. So let's grab a 14 and start zipping these off. Now, I know my car is extremely nasty. It's been my daily for a while and uh, we'll get to cleaning it up soon, I promise. So back here is our factory ECU. Whenever you're doing anything electrical like this, you wanna disconnect the battery. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Now that we got our battery disconnected, we'll toss a 10 millimeter on here. One nut. And now we push these little tabs in. I don't know if you can see them from there, but there's a couple little tabs. Push them in and start unplugging. Might have to grab a screwdriver. There we go. So here's our stock 1995 Mazda Miata ECU. We are done with that, hopefully. And here's our Speedy EFI plug and play Arduino based ECU. I've heard you want to be really careful when you're plugging these connectors in that you don't push one or damage anything, but that felt like it went really smooth. We're just going to let our ECU dangle. I hate to say that, but they've got these mounting holes and stuff, but I don't really want to self tapper in right now. So we're just going to leave it like that. Before we put any carpet or anything back, we're going to plug in our data cable right here that is shipped with the plug and play unit. Get that. We'll get that wrapped out in a minute. But Another big thing that we have to do is we have to run a vacuum line from the intake manifold back to the port right there on our speedy EFI unit because it has a built-in GM three bar map sensor. So let's do that real quick. All right, guys. So I ended up running it over around and unfortunately the previous owner pulled the cruise control out of this car for a hot air intake. And I still don't understand why, but for the time being, we have the vacuum line running in through the open hole where the cruise control originally was. 
And we'll see if you guys can see it. Got it coming down. I doubt you can see anything. We got it coming down and it goes right here underneath the console. And I got it wrapped around up under here. You can see it right here and I'm gonna run it. Just gotta pull that forward and readjust a little bit. Run it underneath the console and down to right here and plug into the speed EFI. So that's not the ideal way, but it looks like it's gonna work. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna throw you guys on time lapse, get the console put back down and button back up, and then uh, we'll start plugging in and see what we can do. One step I forgot to mention is we need to put a GM IAT sensor in. I was going to not do it, but I'm just going to do it because I'm in here. Um, we're going to get rid of our mass airflow sensor now that we have a map sensor built into the Speedy EFI unit. And it came with this nice little jumper harness. So I'm going to run over to my brother's house, grab a drill and some bits, and uh, see if I can find anything to put in between. I'm not sure I can, so I might just end up uh, drilling and tapping it into here temporarily because I don't need this uh this intake piece once we go turbo so i'm gonna run over i might just end up drilling and tapping and then just leaving the mass airflow sensor in there for now but yeah i'll be right back boom got it off so naturally the gopro died but I just drilled a hole in there and uh, threaded it in and we're good to go. So now I'm just going to toss it back on real quick and uh, we'll plug it all in. Alright, so that's on. Now we're going to unplug our mass airflow sensor. Alright, we got that unplugged. Now we're going to plug in our IAT sensor jumper harness. Just like that. Let me... Oh, sorry guys gonna route it down over here kind of out of the way so it doesn't get melted on anything and get it plugged in just like that loop it around that headlight adjustment we are good to go now let's hop back in See if you guys can even see what I'm trying to do. Now that the sun went down, we might be a little better off. The lighting isn't really ideal for this, so I'm gonna go through and uh, show you guys after I start getting stuff set up because you just really can't see much. Just my face and the reflection. All right, we got the top shut and that helps a little bit, but. We need to calibrate, let's see, temperature sensor, air temperature sensor, and then we need to go to GM at the top of the list, right to controller, about 45 degrees, everything looks right. Alrighty boys, as far as I know, I think we're ready for our first test start. Huh. Nothing. Alrighty guys, it is many hours later. Um, it got dark and cold really quick. We got the passenger seat back in. We are data logging. Um, I didn't get to show the first startup because it was getting dark and cold and I was just trying to figure out how to make it run. Um, it's running not great, but I have an issue right now where my fuel pump is not being triggered by my ECU. So on these OVD1 uh, older cars, there's a diagnostic port underneath the uh, hood where you can ground out uh, you can throw a ground pin to your uh, fuel 
little pump pin you can just throw a little jumper in there and I got it to start up and run so I need to diagnose and figure out why my ECU I'm guessing it's in the tune is not uh, triggering my fuel pump like it should but as soon as I did that it starts up so we are cruising we're data logging uh, I had a lot of lot of little issues and I am nothing of a tuner but heck yeah I'm super freaking happy so I uh, am driving over to my brother's house to return some tools and I'm dad logging making sure everything seems okay and he's been tuning his car so I'm gonna get some info from him have him go through my software a little bit and see if he sees anything that's like right in your face out of whack but so far we are cruising on a bass tune and I basically oh it's bucking around and stuff but I feel like a tuner right now boys <laughs> alright yeah. guys so it's actually a few days later it got dark on me I didn't get to finish the video um, I got everything calibrated and I went through and followed cashed out cars uh, I followed his video on getting everything set up go check him out if you want a really good how to um, but I've been having an issue where I haven't been able to get my fuel pump to prime or to get power through my speed EFI unit I still don't know why but I did a band-aid fix that I'm going to keep for a bit. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it, but it's what I did. I'll show you guys real quick under the hood what I did. I ended up jumpering the fuel pump and the ground pin with a paper clip. So in that OBD1 diagnostic port, I just jumpered the fuel pump to the ground. So now whenever I key on the car, the fuel pump keys on. I know that's not the correct way to do it. But no matter what settings I went through, I wasn't able to get my fuel pump to turn on with the computer. So that is my temporary uh, band-aid solution, I guess. I'm going to keep for a while, but it works. So it is what it is. Um, we'll see if we ever get past that or not. But yeah, so I didn't get to finish the video. Um, the car does fire up and run now. I loaded a bass tune in it and basically just followed cashed out cars. Um, and I also hopped on the Speedy EFI help and troubleshooting page on Facebook. They are amazing. Shout out to them. They helped me with a bunch. Of yeah, we got all that done and I was able to drive the car around. I've been doing a little bit of tuning here and there, but I didn't unfortunately finish the video uh, the other day when I was installing the ECU because it got dark and it just didn't work out. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this Turbo Miata series. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. Don't forget to stay hungry, stay humble, stay motivated. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.